I didn't think about this ahead of time, you know, like what I would say to any of this to like, hopefully inspire or entice people to join us. And so in the moment, I'm thinking, um, partly, I imagine it will just be fun and exciting and stimulating, you know, to talk about sexy stuff with a group of people and um, to do it in a way that's intended for us to all be in a space together where we can share things that might be just like sort of titillating to share, but also things that we're ashamed of around sexual our sexuality, um, things that we maybe haven't talked about with other people before, um, maybe even like desires we have, things we want to do with partners and haven't even talked with our partners about those things. Um, I just imagine there are so many different possibilities for what could come up on the calls. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited about, I guess, just simply about all of those possibilities and the parts that could be like fun and juicy and the parts that could be more like um, kind of edgy and like, gosh, uh, you know, that we could potentially like really benefit from getting off our chest. Yeah, I have similar curiosities and I imagine somehow as you were speaking, I thought like, oh, that's kind of how sex is too. Like it could be really juicy and fun and kind of ecstatic and wonderful. And also it could be kind of deep and edgy and ah, and also uh, like really challenging in an emotional way. I'm <laughs> thinking of my own experiences and oftentimes like, yeah, largely after having sex, I think, where I'm feeling like scared or shameful or guilty or kind of regretful, like, oh, I really wanted that to be like fun and juicy and ecstatic. And mm -hmm. I didn't feel that way, or I certainly don't now. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think that that's the, how leading radical honesty workshops and for any variety is the most fun in that we don't we really don't know how it's going to go or what people will bring or what we'll bring even uh, that day so i feel similar to you i imagine like very curious to see what comes up and will it be <laughs> yeah again like just so many metaphors to sex itself like Will it be kind of light and fun in a real way or will it be kind of light and fun in a way that's pretentious or make believe like, oh, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Or like sex, sex is cool and like yeah. aren't I fun? Or will it be like, yeah, kind of deep and scary or. um, A little bit of all of those things. Yeah, I'm I like that you brought up the part about like pretentious and stuff, because I think it can be really easy in conversations about sex for that part of us to show up, you know, this part that's like, sex is fun and cool. And let's talk about it in a like provocative kind of way and all the like, sexy, what you know, and still we have no idea what what we may end up, you know, like the different paths we may end up going down just because of what comes up during a call that a particular person brings up or is having an experience around that then we end up having a whole new world of things to talk about too. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I really like what you said about the pretending because I'm having the thought that that's something we explore in radical honesty a lot about how do you protect a certain image of yourself or or behave in such a way that you get the reactions or responses from people that you want to and um, however you want to phrase it and i'm thinking for myself as you were mentioning it like oh shit like sex is probably that's an area where i am most attached to looking and being seen a certain way absolutely yeah and i i'm gonna i have the idea of like oh maybe i'll say some of mine and i'd be curious to hear yours but my yeah. i think mine when i first was having sex <laughs> was my big agenda was to fool the other person into thinking i was competent yeah like knew what i was doing 
Yeah, and I felt a lot of pressure and still do as a male identified person to be the leader yeah. in that realm. And I even remember having a partner who said something like once I asked her like what you know what, what would you like to do or like would you want to do this and then she said something like I don't know the guy's always done that <laughs> I was totally like I feel it now actually I feel really tense over it I felt somehow I made it mean that I was not man enough or masculine yeah. or I felt yeah. really really ashamed and scared in that moment and yeah and still sometimes slip into that and now it's like just a, a newer level of that like I want to be seen as yeah dominant or the one who's initiating and leading and the woman is safe etc mm -hmm. and sometimes that's real and sometimes I'm just faking it or yeah I'm just faking it yeah yeah I I'm <sighs> I'm just thinking of how much pretending I imagine goes on in the realm of, of sex, like while having sex. And yeah, I think that's such a huge area um, in general where people pretend a lot. And for myself, oh my gosh, so much, you know, like, especially thinking of when I was younger and, um, I mean, and I don't have many experiences to draw on in the, in the, <laughs> like I haven't been ha having sex for the last three years or more now. So I don't have much um, recent stuff to draw on. And um, I'm thinking about things that I have pretended about in the past that I feel like sad for myself, like pretending that things didn't hurt when yeah. they did, or, the, you know, that things were that I was comfortable physically when there are ways that I was really very uncomfortable and like just not wanting to upset or offend or um like not wanting the person to have hurt feelings or feel inadequate in some way so I just want to like behave like everything no everything's great this is <laughs> this is fun every um yeah. And then of course there's like so much around like faking orgasm and you know, all there. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's a lot that we could talk about just, yeah. With pretenses around sex, having sex. One of the explorations we have intended for the series is for people to talk about um, what Jack Marin called like peak erotic experiences, times where you had sex that were like especially enjoyable or um, really stand out in one's memory. And I'm, yeah, I know I have one in mind and I'm thinking like, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, shit. Okay. Yeah. So I'll share one of mine. And for about a year and a half, I had a, um like a longer term partner and we were exploring some kinky stuff which i hadn't done much of previously particularly in the like dom some sub world and i would often be and we were long distance she lived on the on the east coast and i would often have um be in hotel rooms on her side of the country for work and she would drive to visit me like come and visit me and we or we or i we started doing this <laughs> practice that i really liked that she would come and park at the hotel and i would tell her what my room number was and i would leave the door unlocked and then write like a note for her and leave it on the bed. And then I'd go into the bathroom and she'd like enter to come to this note. And then I'd have a series of instructions for her. And it would be like, put this blindfold on, put these handcuffs on and wait for me on your knees or something like that. And yeah, and then I felt 
like really strong and like yeah, I found it arousing and fun and totally different than anything I'd done before and also like really raunchy somehow like I felt dirty in a really like fun way and yeah and that became like usually a couple times a month at least uh, we would interact that way and I think it I was really challenging this we spoke in the previous little video about pretense or image what image you you or I want to promote and one of mine is that I don't want to come off as creepy or lecherous to women women that's like my big like the worst thing that yeah. a woman could think about me is kind of like that I'm like graspy and pervy and so in the past with my sexual encounters and partners I imagine really like the moment I would see her my mind was like when are we going to have sex and I would do this sort of pretending like elaborate game of like oh like how are you and like try to connect when really I was in the back of my mind I was like when are we gonna like have sex like when is this gonna happen mm. and so I had this bits of shame that would come up with this partner where it was like yeah I don't the first time I'm going to even see her because most of the time she was blindfolded the first time I'm going to see her is after we've already had sex like I will not speak to her until we've already um been sexual and I really liked that and yeah. also yeah I feel some tension in my collarbones right now and my shoulders yeah and I had some shit up around that so anyway I that was longer than I meant for it to be and I that's what comes up for me when I think about like times where I had sex that was really felt fun and especially enjoyable yeah and I know you just mentioned like some of the sensations you're noticing and I kind of just want to hear like overall and if there are more sensations cool but like overall how does it how do you feel talking about that right now with me and knowing we're recording and yeah thanks I you know it's like a, one of my little ticks is to go like with the <laughs> and I noticed yeah. I did that and and I looked away from the screen a lot. And the mm -hmm. times I did look at you, I was, I imagine sort of like scanning, like, is this, how are you doing with like hearing this? Yeah. With equal parts, like, I hope she's not like triggered or hurt. And mm -hmm. yeah, the part I really am more reticent to tell you is like, does this do anything for her? Like, is uh -huh. this, yeah. like, is, is she <laughs> something about me like hearing this or, is this arousing for her at all? Like, wouldn't that be cool? Um, and as far as, like, I have kind of a distant acknowledgement that other people will hear this and see this. Yeah. And there's some way that I'm keeping some distance from it, I imagine, yeah. as a way of, like, mm, I don't know how I, what might come up for me if I really allowed myself to absorb, like, yeah, people who I no we'll see this and people i don't know will likely watch this and now they'll know this thing about yeah. me yeah and that does more for my yeah in my shoulders and back and i appreciate you for asking the question yeah and and i also want to ask then so is there anything you want to ask me is there anything you want to know about my experience of hearing that that you feel like asking sure and i just had like do you actually want to when you say sure i think like are, are you just going to because i'm asking you to or do you like actually wonder something that you want to ask me about i think i pro i imagine i do and when you asked that i imagine what happened was like oh yeah i would like to know and then like sort of an immediate like response to that like oh but what if sort of a fear immediate fear that comes in of like oh i'm gonna ask you and what if i don't get the response i like or what if it's bad something like that so i imagine there is a desire there and it's sort of snuffed out immediately by yeah. a fear so yeah yeah i think the question i would like least like to ask is like <laughs> yeah i want to make it vague like what did you feel doing that during that and the real question is like 
Yeah, did you like hearing any of that? Like, was that uh, arousing for you in any way? Yeah, so I don't know if I'd go as far as to say arousing, but maybe a tiny bit, maybe like a little feeling, a little sensation in my body. And, and I don't think I'm, I'm not surprised by anything you said. Yeah. And that sounds fun to me and exciting. Um, and I also was having thoughts like, oh, I don't know that I've ever been with anybody who's like, thinks stuff out that much. You know, like about like having some sort of sexual encounter. The part of me that's a little bit like, I don't know, a tiny judgy about like that's so. I don't know. I don't know what it is exactly, but I have some little like twinge of something that's like, oh, that's too much. That's too like, like almost like that's like nerding out around people like that but mostly I think that sounds like fun and exciting and appealing and um yeah and I think I like knowing that about you that like you want that sort of thing or like that sort of encounter and I notice I'm shaking my head a little bit and I'm not sure what that's about yeah and looking away too as I'm talking <laughs> so um, I feel lots of sensations from from that last bit of the conversation from you asking me basically what I thought about what you shared and if I was like turned on by that in any way and just notice lots of sensations. I want to acknowledge like my armpits got super sweaty <laughs> and I feel like some tension in my shoulders and um, I don't know how to describe it almost like a swirling or something in my chest and um and I, I don't even know exactly what that's about I just notice all of those sensations happening in my body and want to share them and then I also um want to acknowledge that I have thoughts that are like oh I'd really like to like dig into this conversation with you and talk about all kinds of stuff like this more and I do imagine that um that there's some way that I um, have some sort of wall up to because of recording. Like I, since what we're doing is is recording video to share with people about this series that we're gonna be doing, I want to also acknowledge that like, as we do things and potentially as we have these conversations during our sessions, during our calls, there might be things that come up that we're like, oh shit, like, where we find some resistance or what some people would maybe refer to as like, I'm noticing a boundary coming up for me or, you know, something like that. And um, yeah, somehow I'm just wanting to like shine the light on or acknowledge, oh, I guess I'm realizing that there are like some things that I would like to talk with you about and even like a group of people during our sessions about that I don't really want to get into as deeply on a recording that we're going to share with, you know, the whole world, whoever watches it within the whole world. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to to mention that and think like, oh, I feel like excitement and fun around the idea of talking with you about that stuff more. And yeah, less enthusiastic about the possibility of recording that in video and sharing it with just, yeah, any anybody who might be watching. You know we know each other well enough to so when you said something like doesn't surprise me i thought like yeah because you know some about my sexual self and a lot about my the rest of me i imagine yeah and similarly i know a lot about you and your sexual life <laughs> for the last few years and i wonder if you would say something about where you're at currently in terms of exploring sex or yeah whatever you want to talk about if any yeah, I don't I don't really know what I want to say about that I I haven't been in a romantic relationship since I don't even I don't even know I think like three years but I feel like I've been saying three years for a while now so it could be longer than that um 
And during that time, up until somewhat recently, wasn't even dating and wasn't having sex with any, wasn't meeting people in any romantic or sexual way. Um, and just didn't want to, because I've done, I imagine so much of, of dating and having sex in my life that I wanted some time that I was kind of just separate from that and just doing my own thing and seeing what life was like outside of romantic and, and sexual relating. Um, and now in the last six months, I've been kind of dipping my toe back into like, oh, do I want to date people? Um, I'm missing sex, but mostly like the, the like, closeness and intimacy and cuddling kind of like part of sexuality or romantic relationships um and have briefly dated one person who I did have sex with one time and we were talking earlier about pretending and I'm thinking to myself wow like even in that most recent encounter I want to make all these excuses like well because I hadn't had sex in so long before that and like all of this stuff but like I imagine that I did do a good amount of pretending during during that experience and um yeah and so I don't even know what else I want to say about that except that I'm just realizing like ah oh, shit I think of myself as quite good at like sharing with people when I'm catching myself or noticing myself pretending in some way. And I think I was just, just kind of wanting to be light and fun and going with the flow during that experience. And yeah, so I imagine I was pretending like, oh, I don't even really know how to, how to pinpoint it but but I was doing some pretending around like like wanting to just be having kind of like light sexy fun instead of like oh actually I think I kind of want to just be like connecting and slow and like and having sex like I wanted to be having sex and wanted to be having sex with him and I think also wanted to be having more of a feel of like like tenderness and and having all the like nice physical sensations and everything but wanting more just kind of like slowness and tenderness I think and and what's funny is I kind of imagine that was probably the case for him too so I kind of have this idea that we were like both pretending that like we're just gonna have like fun sexy sex you know <laughs> instead of like oh let's like slow down and connect with each other and like what are we actually what are we actually doing this for right now what do we actually both want right now and what are we wanting to get out of this kind of thing and I imagine that a lot of us think like there's something unsexy or something that takes us out of the moment if we're like talking too much beforehand about like what are we doing here together or what do we want or like what am I needing right now or whatever it might be so yeah I don't know what else to say about that except that um even as someone who I imagine practices radical honesty as a norm in my daily life still after you know three years not having sex my first experience having sex again I think was yeah I, I was definitely doing some pretending and I like the idea of like going back and talking with that person about that now, you know, or certainly before I would have sex with him again. So yeah, those are my thoughts at the moment. Yeah, thanks for what you said. Yeah. Yeah, I stopped breathing for certain points while you were talking. Mm. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot in my body right now too. I, I imagine I was like a little disconnected when I was talking, like maybe disconnected from you and maybe a little bit from myself, like not paying attention so much to my body. And then when I was done, I kind of noticed how I'm feeling, like some tension in my belly and shoulders. Um, yeah, and I think I feel a little sad. Yeah, I really uh, appreciate you for what you said about your break from 
sex and and I guess what I excite myself over is this idea that that of the variety of people that could come to this workshop or anything with regard to sex and that there's something in it for like if you were abstinent and you have never had sex before or 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 virgin or anything yeah that there's still a way that you relate to sex and to yourself i imagine as a sexual being yeah and yeah i feel kind of tingly like ooh, like i would love to just hear people talk about I, i'm excited about the idea of people talking about themselves with this as the context with which we're sharing this being yeah. sex or sexuality i like talking about sex as a subject and like hearing people talk about them themselves and their sex life and and maybe it's hubris but like that there's not in my experience a lot of spaces where you come and speak about sex in a way you alluded to in a previous video of like where it's not sort of performative even the yeah. talking about it isn't performative it's like oh we did this and yeah. boy was it fun yeah. and it's kind of idea of like yeah there was this part like i was with her and i didn't know if i was doing a good job or if she liked it and i was worried yeah. she wasn't liking it and wouldn't tell me and i felt self-conscious and i didn't know what to do and and i don't know if we'll have sex again and i'd like to and i don't think she liked it enough to i don't know just like a lot of yeah layers of pretending or or different feelings that come up at least for me around yeah and and I think there's benefit to talking about those things that are the more like talking about the more challenging things that have happened for us or the things that maybe left us feeling not so great during and after and then I think there's a lot, a lot of benefit to also being able to 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 admit or share like and also I have all of these like fun, sexy things that happen that I like want you to know about. I like want people in the world to hear these fun, sexy stories that I have because I want you to know me as a sexual person or I want you to think of me as sexy or fun or wild or adventurous or whatever it might be. I think, um, yeah, it's like also just, just fun and exciting and exhilarating to talk about the things that we want to talk about when it comes to sex and the things that feel, yeah, just more fun. Um, yeah. And so I like to see, you know, just for, for myself, like in this group that we'll be doing and for you, I'm, I'm so eager and curious to see what will come up for me, what will come up for you. And then of course, what, how it will be for all of the people participating. And, um, like I've said several times now, I imagine that we could do never ending sessions on this. You know, this is like a four session series that we are planning and I can imagine that we could just endlessly keep doing you know a call every week or every other week forever and never run out of stuff to talk about fun stuff to talk about and also you know like like challenging and heavy and harder stuff to talk about that like gets to our you know sort of deepest insecurities and um yeah like our earliest wounds and things like that so yeah there's there's a lot a lot there and so then of course I'm glad that we're doing the the series that we're doing because then we can you know take the time over four separate calls to talk about to talk about all kinds of these things and and see what comes up